Without luck, nothing of importance can ever be achieved, okay? And we were lucky, Shafi and I. And so our first luck was we were together and uh, attending um, uh, a course of Manuel Blum, which is a fantastic teacher, and the course was on computational number theory. And the last three lectures, only the last three lectures, were about you know, cryptography. And so we, um, we were in a fantastic position in time and space. Uh, and then a, a question was uh, raised uh, uh, towards the end of the course, uh, which was almost put up there to say, can you play mental poker? So, you know, you know, not to play poker with physical cards, we are in front of you and so on and so forth. But what if you want to play over the internet by exchanging messages? Well, you know, then in such a case, sure, I'll play poker with you, but do you mind if I do the dealing, right? <laughs> and so, and so then, uh, and that's where, uh, so that was the luck. The fearlessness comes that all of a sudden, you know, we thought that's a so exciting uh, thing that, you know, Shafi and, he, and I decided, you know, that's what we sh should be doing. You know, first year graduate student, turns out that we eventually succeeded in doing it, but it took us, you know, a decade. We realized that to solve the problem, we really needed to have, you know, a better way to encrypt. Even before the dealing, before anything else, you need to have encrypted somehow the cards. And then dealing is put aside for a while, but how do you encrypt the cards? And um, encryption, until that point, was deterministic. So if you have one message, there is only one possible encryption for it. So what prevents, uh, essentially, somebody to understand the, the ciphertext is these messages are long. I mean, technically, I should say have enough entropy. Because if you are to guess a long message exactly, it's very hard. So you don't quite know, given the encryption, what the underlying uh, clear text was. But when we're talking about poker, we are talking about 52 cards. So there is not long messages. So in some sense, you know, a priori is one of these 52. And so we decided actually to say, you know what, let's make it even harder, uh, the problem. So how about if you want to encrypt only zero one, okay? And so this making the problem harder actually made it simpler. That was actually really our luck to try to make it harder because once you, if you want to go zero one, there is only one possible f way of, uh, of uh, uh, skinning the cat. So namely, you must have necessarily a probabilistic way of encrypting from an adversary who is just since passing by a random encryption of a bit, he doesn't know which is zero or one, he cannot have a better than 50-50 ability to understand if he means zero or one without the secret. And uh, because assume that you know, um, uh, the only message is yes or no, and you understand, say, 75% of the time that oh is a yes, then uh, you, have, you can really do damage as an adversary. So it should not be 75, it should not be 60, it should not be 51, it should not be 50.5, it should be 50 plus epsilon with a very, 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 very small epsilon. If you have the right definition, you are half done. Then there is the rest of the work, and we had to do that too. So the, the rest of the work says, okay, now I know the properties. Now I, find, I must find some way to implement this property. I mean, that, that's already very good to come up with the right definition, but then you must implement it. And then we had another strike of luck. And, uh, and, and that is a luck of it that uh, somehow uh, maybe favors the young or at least favors me, and that is ignorance. Ignorance is a form of luck because what you want to do is that when, when you know a lot, think about it like a big haystack, okay? So you put all your knowledge into this big pile that you cannot somehow juggle in your mind at the same time. But what you're needing and looking for is the needle, which is how do you implement, given the immensity of whatever you know, the right way to implement the, the three properties that I just said. But if you are ignorant, so if you have a very few pieces of straw to find the needle, is easy. I mean, you must be lucky because first of all, Benita has to be among his four straw, but it was. So remember we had a, a course, it was the first course ever done at, at Berkeley. So we felt it says, well, it's so simple, it's so beautiful, so stuck, it ought to be true. That is another advantage of somebody who has no reputation to defend. Because we were a first year graduate student. If you were wrong, nothing would happen. Assume you have a reputation, then you are much more conservative, right? So, but we were in that spirit that uh, we landed uh, 
in an island. We had a look around. There seemed to be nobody around. When we put a flag, this island now is the kingdom of Sylvian Schaff. If things were done like this, so more or less was an act like this. I always respect luck. But after that, there is work, OK? And so we had somehow to, to prove things, uh, having guessed that it was hard. And so we had to develop, you know, what it turns out to be the notion of computational indistinguishability, uh, the hybrid argument, uh, um, um, uh, random self-reducibility, all kinds of techniques that would become the bread and butter of uh, future cryptography. But uh, we, we, we did it then on that particular example because we wanted to play mental poker. That is uh, really roughly what went on back then.